Hi everybody, my name is TJ Masakona and today we are in Johannesburg, South Africa in a place called Bruma at ATNS and we're going to be talking everything about ATNS today. But if you want to know more information about ATNS, you will see the website displayed on the bottom www.atns.com. That's the place for all the information. But I've got three wonderful guests. I'm not going to be doing this on my own. It would suck if I was on my own. But I've got three wonderful guests that are going to bring us through the entire scope of what ATNS does. On my immediate left, we've got Mr. Tokozani Mabuza, who is an engineering technician. And in the center, we've got Brachi van Skaldweg, who is an air traffic flow specialist. And on my far right, we've got Mpo McDon Mueti, who is a principal aeronautical telecommunications network specialist. And we're going to get more and suck all the juice that we can out of this guys guys get ready let's get started and let's get into this conversation guys we gathered here because of atns but i think somebody's asking them so what does atns do what did, what does atns get along with i mean you can you can we can start to go and tell us what does atns do okay i think maybe the first place to start is to say what atns means what does that acronym yeah. atns stands for yeah. it stands for air traffic and navigation services. Yeah. So in short, for a layman's terms, we are speed cops for the air. <laughs> okay. So it, we, we are providing service yeah. to airliners. So the air traffic, the navigation part, is to help the, the pilots or the airliners to navigate their way from one destination yeah. to the next. I understand we are controlling about 10% of the world airspace. So meaning that South Africa controls 10% of airspace that is available in the world. So we are providing the navigation services. Uh, yeah. My colleagues are providing the aeronautical services and the airspace management unit. So yeah. we are providing everything that has to do with everyone who's flying must be paying ATNS yeah. for the services that are being provided. Okay, so what does ATNS do uh, at large? What is their core value? What, what stands out for them? We keep the airspace and the operators in them safe. Yeah. Safety yeah. is paramount to our day-to-day -day yeah. operations. Yeah. Um, the safety of our passengers and cargo mm. is paramount. Mm. Therefore, we have strict rules and regulations that we adhere to. Um, somebody was asking me before this interview, you know, how long does it take to become an air traffic controller? And I said, it takes a while. Yeah. Even though you don't go to university, you do thorough training. And, and training is such an important building block. Yeah. So when you start off with your first core content course, you would do a course, you'd go back to your unit, you would mm. do on-the-job training. Mm. You are never put in a position where you can hurt yourself or somebody yeah. else. Yeah. You always go back to your unit and get more training. You get theoretical, practical training at the academy for which, whichever rating you are going to do. Yes. You do it there, you go back to your unit, you do unit-specific training and on-the-job training until you are checked out. Right. You will never be allowed to sit there and not be sure. You mm. get thorough and good training. And that is true for ev each and every rating that yeah. you do. Um, we also have a department, a safety department, yes. just dedicated to should there be a safety event, it's investigated, um, we look at mitigating inf yeah. factors, you know, why did it happen? We have a no blame culture um, where you, you report something that occurred and they investigate why does it happen? Um, let's not do this again or, you know, this is a once-off. Yeah. Uh, we've, I have never in my 32 years had any event known that I have known in the, this organization or the other organization that I've worked mm. where an ATC made a mistake deliberately that yeah. would be yeah. um, said as a violation. Mm. So whatever occurs is always because they, in safety we say, like everything lines up and it's like the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. So we try and all our procedures are written to circumnavigate everything from lining up for a event. Yeah. And that is why our training is so thorough. Our standards are so high. Yeah. Because do you want to fly knowing that somebody down there doesn't know what they're doing? No. no. You want to know that yeah. everybody is skilled and qualified, bringing the A game every day. Sure. And that's what we do. 
And Macdon, I mean, you you being part of the aeronautical information side of things, uh, just a brief of what ATNS does and who ATNS is. I'd say ATNS. Think of the aircraft in the sky. Yeah. When you see the aircraft in the sky, just know that ATNS is involved. Is involved. <laughs> so from where it departed to yeah. where it's gonna land, ATNS is involved. Yeah. So. Uh, the information flowing to yeah. make sure that the aircraft gets to the right destination, yeah. the routing, the navigational points, mm. the pilots planning their route. Yeah. It's all ATNS. Pilot knowing what's happening, where it's going, all ATNS. ATNS. Yes. Sure. So that ATNS basically, when you see an aircraft in the sky, think ATNS. Guys, you see a drone, you see an aircraft, anything that flies except a creature. It's ATNS. <laughs> Tokozani, coming from Feni, I mean, just before we deal with the pressures, coming from Feni in Pumalang, I don't even think people know where Feni is. I mean, how, how did that go? Actually, Feni is right in the heart of Pumalang, like about 80 kilometers from ML, going yeah. far as to going to Swaziland. Sure. So we are in the, between Swaziland and ML, in a yeah. way. So if you are around that place, that, that's where I hailed from. So... I moved to Joburg and then I went to Vets Technicon, yeah. University of Johannesburg now. When you say Vets Technicon, you are exposing your age, of but course, it's okay. Of course, of course. As I told you, I've been here for 14 years, so that, that should also count. That's it. Yeah, so I went to, to Vets Technicon. Yeah. And then when we were at Vets Technicon, we were doing four semesters of, uh, of, uh, of uh, like what to call, theoretical learning. Yeah. So after the four year, after the four semesters, then we need to do practical training training, yeah. which is divided into two semesters, two six months. Yeah. So it was then I was introduced to ATNS by our recruitment officer at work. So he usually come to ATNS and seek practical training for all their students. Okay. But actually, there's something that happened whilst I was doing metric. Sure. Yeah. There was this uh, book, uh, career book we call Rainbow. I don't know, if, um, of course, depending on your age, you <laughs> okay, might remember, yeah. <laughs> of course. So I, I, I was paging through somehow, and I got to a page, there was ATNS. I didn't know ATNS, I didn't know what they were doing, but somewhere in my mind, I said, yeah. I would like to work here. Yeah. I didn't know what was it. Sure. So then we go through the training, and then we did the practical le learning for the two, six months yeah. at the ATNS, and then after that, we were taken, we were absorbed into the system. Sure. And then it came back to my mind, like, I saw this company somewhere yeah. and I said I want to work. So sure. it was like a dream come true that I never thought wow. it was the biggest yeah. dream that would do come true. So yeah, I came from that rural area, managed to go through Technicon, managed to come here and here am I now telling you to come to ATNS. <laughs> Becky, how, how did you encounter ATNS? How did, how did that happen? I started with air traffic control. Yeah. Um, in my last year at school, my dad took me up to a tower yeah. and I see these people talking to somebody on the headsets, and I'm like, who are they talking to? Sure. They're talking to aircraft. I said, where's the aircraft? I can't see them. And they said, there, there, there. And I looked, and sure, that there yeah. they were. I said, I want to know how to do this. And they said, don't worry, get training. And I went to the Air Force, joined the Air Force. I got trained as a controller there. And um, I went with the one squadron, the F1s, the back then yeah. to Bloemfontein for an operational deployment and we did an exercise and I was the liaison with the civilian ATCs ah. and um, we did so many good things together that they actually invited me to apply to come to ATNS. Um, before ATNS, it was DGCA, the yeah. Directorate of Civil Aviation. Yeah. So they just formed the company ATNS Air Traffic Navigation Services and they said, why don't you come and join the family? Sure. And we did. My husband's also a controller. Wow. We both left and we joined ATNS. Sure. This is amazing. So you can come with your husband. That's it. That's the story. Bring the family. This is a family <laughs> business. <laughs> and McDonald, how, how did you get introduced to ATNS? How did you get here? Um, after, right after my metric, after we got our results, we got a call from school. And they said uh, ATNS was looking for recruitment. So I had a choice. That was before the sem first semester started. I had applied to uh, study at UJ, but I didn't have a bursary at that time. So when ATNS called, uh, when my school called and yeah. said, there's a company that's looking for people. I went and I listed my name. And uh, I got a call So to to come uh, do psychometrics here. Yeah. So I didn't even know ATNS existed at that time sure. or what they did. So when I came here, 
I just fell in love with the place. So I just told myself, I want to be here. I don't want to... I don't want to uh, be a chartered accountant anymore. I don't want to go that road anymore. Let me just come here and give it a shot. And I fell in love with the place. So I just told myself, I want to be here. And from the psychometrics, I just fought and I fought and I fought. Sure. Even the interview, I made sure yeah, yeah. that I give them as much information about me. I'm as open and uh, here I am. Until today, you're still in love. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Chokazani, take us through, through your day. How does your day look like at work? A typical day at work, how does that look like? Okay, um, where we work at the FOR Rotambo International Airport, we have two types of days. So you yeah. can have a, come in as a shift technician. Okay. So as a shift technician, you come in the morning and then you check all the equipment that the ATCs use, like your CNS, as I said earlier, like your communication equipment, navigation equipment, and the surveillance. So you check all that equipment. If there's one that is uh, faulty, you call one of your colleagues, they call one of my colleagues, they come through and they fix that. And then number two, you also help the ATCs in the operational center when there's an equipment that is not working or if the screen that is yeah. uh, blank or all those things. So you help them uh, firsthand. And then you also liaise with service providers. Let's say Telcom is one of our service providers and ESCOM is one of the service providers. So if there's an equipment that uses Telcom lines mm -hmm. and is still not serviceable, so you need to call those people service and provider, check yeah. them uh, how far are they with the fixing. And also we have the fault operation center it's, it's housed in Joburg International, in Owartambo International Airport. Yeah. So you liaise with them to check if there was any faults that were reported during the night mm. that needs to be attended. So that's the part of you being a shift technician. And then there's also a part where you, we're doing a routine maintenance, yeah. planned routine maintenance. So like, there you, we check the equipment for serviceability. And then if you see that the equipment is on the edge of uh, being um, unserviceable, so you change that equipment before it can cause oh, any yeah. disturbance to yeah. the users. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that, that's technically what we do. The day, the day goes like that. I'm, I'm sure Brecht is going to bring us into this myth, apparently, that when you join ATNS, you only start by drinking one liter of coffee. Ten years on, you drink 20 liters a day. Fifteen years on. So <laughs> is it true that you drink a lot of coffee, guys? You, you do. You do. <laughs> Some people drink tea. <laughs> but coffee does the trick. How does it day go? How does, how does it day go? Well, we start, the KMU opens up at 4 o'clock in the yeah. morning. So 4 a.m. morning shift starts. They clean the KMU web. That is yeah. our interface. It's online with yeah. the airlines and the airports. Yeah. So we clean the web. The, the flights that's not going to take place. We align the calculated takeoff times, often referred to as CTOTs, with what the airline actually is looking for yeah. and balancing the demand. So we do that, looking at the serviceability, the weather, special events that's going to take place, and we then set up the daily airspace yeah. plan. That plan is sent out by email, also posted on our website. Mm. We discuss that plan at the teleconference in the mornings where the airlines, airport operators, and the weather services would then phone in and we discuss the plan and tweak it should it need be to, to, to be adjusted. Yeah. Um, then that, the minutes also get sent out via email for the mm -hmm. telcon. In the afternoons, the, the demand forecast is then popularized to see what's going to happen the next day. We look at the weather forecast, special events again, and the capacity. So that is all sent out and posted on the website. During the day, we receive several calls for change of slot times yeah. because maybe there was an issue with the baggage handlers mm -hmm. or catering and the, the flight is a little bit late or the flight, the aircraft that was supposed to go out came in late. There was weather, all those kinds of things. Yeah. So the, it's a very fluid situation. Sure. So it changes and we adjust the program. Um, we have an overview of the entire country's mm -hmm airspace and airport so we can see okay if this one goes here then this one can fit in here it's like a little bit of a, a chess game yeah. so and but we don't do that in isolation we do that with collaborative decision making yes. which is a inclusive and transparent process mm. that 
builds trust with our customers. Wonderful. That sounded like uh, one, two, three, seven cups of coffee a day. Do you, 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 you should come work at the I Kremu. feel you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> Macdon, how does your day go? Like, typically, how does your day play out? Um, AIM is a 24-hour station. So, okay. 24 hours, 365 days, or 366 in the leap year. You mean so, on Christmas, I have to be there? Christmas okay. from, from 6 to 6, 24 hours. So, basically, there's no uh, break to flying. Yeah. People want to fly all the time. Yeah. So we need to make sure that uh, pilots are able to plan their flights yeah. whenever they want to. And they also, if uh, any equipment, like Tozani said earlier, that um, he wakes up at uh, 12 in the uh, midnight mm. to come fix equipment. If that equipment is broken, we need to make sure that the pilots know about it on time. So yeah. as soon as it happens, that information needs to get to, get, to spread around the world. So we make sure that the, that information gets to everyone that it's supposed to on time. And also the routes, the messages take, we need to make sure that they are serviceable 24-7. So should a link go down, maybe our link from here to Madrid goes, should it go down at 12 midnight, we need to make sure that that link is reported and yeah. an alternative routing is, uh, is, is, uh, arranged mm. to make sure that the information gets to where it's supposed to so we don't lose the information. So we make sure that everything runs 24-7. My job is to basically oversee the entire unit. Yeah. So my phone is also uh, online 24-7. They wake me up at the crazy hours of the morning <laughs> on Saturdays, on Christmas. So yeah, the only break I get is on, when I'm on leave, of course, but yeah. <laughs> It's all fun and games. <laughs> I think flexibility is the name of the game. Yeah, we just yeah. have to all be flexible yes, to be so able true. to Definitely. meet what is the requirement and what is the standard that we are supposed to work at. So, Bracky, tell us, what kind of a person do you have to be to be, you know, an ATC? What kind of qualities do you need to possess? First of all, you need to be a team player, yeah. a good communicator, able to operate under pressure, sure. get the job done. Yeah. Um, I find that generalizing, just saying it's got to be a type, type A or mm -hmm. extrovert or introvert, I'd rather just say, because you get the introvert uh, controllers and the, the, the loud mouse, you yeah. know. So I would rather just say, if you are driven to make it work yeah. and you are good at maths, yeah. um, problem solving, good communicator, this job is for you. If you don't like a boring day, if the thought of sitting in an office nine to five kills you, yeah. this is the job for it's you. The place to be, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Tokozani, I assume on the engineering side, uh, we might have a few extra in terms of qualities. What, what kind of a person should I be? I think the most important thing is attention to details. Sure. As, as Branky said, you need to be a person who can be able to work under pressure. Yeah. Because... Um, Sometimes you need to get something fixed in a very short space of time. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a clear thinking uh, attitude. You need to have your mind yeah. at ease so, so that you need to make those decisions under pressure. And those decisions must be decisions that are going to ensure that everything is available. And you need to love your maths, yeah. as, as she said. You need to, your physical science is also very, very important. So if you are not in love with those subjects, because those are the ones that leads you into being where we are. So meaning that the details are very important. Yeah. And you need to be pronto with what with whatever decision you make. Guys, if you've not been in marriage with Matt's, it's time to propose. Get on with it. The real action. one. The real not one. The no, one. Yeah. Matt's Matt's the real one, not Matt's literacy. Yeah. Lastly, I, I just want to go all around and say somebody's watching us at home, sitting there and just thinking, this is impossible. Like the stuff that I'm hearing, will I even get here? Just a short word of encouragement from each and every one of you to somebody sitting at home, that young grade eight child who is encountering this conversation for the first time. They're even looking at the dictionary to say, what does this mean? And they really feel like this is what they want to do. What can you tell them? I'm going to start with Tokozani because we don't want him to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Someone said, I think, it always look impossible. Until it's done. It sounds like Nelson Mandela, eh? Ah, so you do your TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
every time when you're faced with a situation, it looks like it's it's impossible. Yeah. But if there's someone who's already in that position, it means that it's possible. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where you were born. The fact that you were born, it means that there's something you can do yeah. and there's a change you can make. So to those uh, young ones, I can say, if I did it, it means that it's possible, yeah. it can be done. Yeah. So meaning that there is nothing that is impossible as long as we live. Yeah. So beautiful. if you want to come here, go for it. Yeah. You'll wake up at 2 a.m., but you'll go home very happy. They're taking good care of us. <laughs> I like that last part. Becky, standing up in the tower, first time as a little girl, what can you tell that little girl that has never been in any tower? Well, I have never looked back saying, yo, I should have done this or should have done that. Yeah. I am very grateful for the training that I've received. Yes. Um, anybody that want, like say, you know, um, will I make it? Mm. You will never know until you embark on that journey. Yeah. If you meet the criteria, yes. apply for the bursary, start it. Some people, you know, start and say, well, this is not really what I thought it was. It, you know, mm. but... Most people stay yeah. and they grow and they want to know more. Like McDonald said, I said, wow, you know. So if you meet the criteria, apply, you will receive the best training in the world at this company. And I can say that sure. because the employees from ATNS is highly so yeah. Yeah, they yeah. are sourced from other companies mm -hmm. across the globe sure. because the training is so good. Yeah. Our standards are so high. Yeah. We stick to the recommended practices and we have safe skies in South Africa. Come yeah. join the team. Definitely. Yeah. McDonald, Davidton, somebody from Davidton is listening to him. I know that guy, I saw him <laughs> in the street. What can you tell them? Yeah, uh, it's fun. Sure. It's fun. Although there's a lot to do, yeah. but it's fun. It's uh, it's a different journey, yeah. I can say. You are introduced to a lot of things. TV tells you about doctors. It tells you about chartered accountants yeah. and that. You're not really introduced to aviation. Yeah. But once you walk in, 32 years is nothing. Like she says 32 years. I've been here for 10 years and I've, I don't feel like I've been here for 10 years yeah. because of... Uh, what I encounter every yeah. day, what I experience every day, yeah. uh, the responsibility that I have, uh, the responsibility that I have with regard, regarding the, the people that are flying every day, yeah. uh, what I need to do to make sure that their flight uh, is safe. Sure. Yes. And also what I can tell them is that, you know, you can, uh, like TK said, you grew up uh, in a township or in the rural areas. Yeah. You don't have hope to go to university. Probably you don't know. Actually, you can't even envision Yourself. having the money yeah. to actually get to university because yeah. you're just thinking about the fees and stuff. But it's possible through the book. Yes. Like the more you work hard, there's no door that will never unlock yeah. for you because of your work. You work hard. You see yourself somewhere. Although there's no hope where, where you are at that moment, but you need to have that vision to say, okay, with the little that I have. With the with education, education actually opens doors. Yeah, I'm living proof. Yeah. I got where I am right now, yeah. and I didn't even pay a cent. So yes, so I didn't go to university. Right now, I have an opportunity. Actually, within ATNS, actually, they have bursary programs mm. that actually help you. So you can actually realize your dream also and grow within the company, then become what you want to do to be. So you can work and even study. Apply to any university that you want to apply. And ATNS will actually be able to assist you also, also at that point. So you can grow up without money, yeah. get the bursary, yeah. work at ATNS, and grow yourself within ATNS. Yeah. That's how nice it is. No, oh, beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much to all my guests. Thank you so much, guys, for giving us all the information that we need. I'm sure somebody sitting at home, that young girl, that young boy sitting at home thinking, I can be part of this, be part of ATNS. And I really, really appreciate it. To everybody at home, if you want to know more about ATNS, www.atns.com is exactly where you need to go right now while you're sitting on your couch. And we'll definitely be excited to have you join us, apply, be part of what we're doing, keep the sky safe, and we'll definitely see you on the flip side. I hope to meet you on the corridor, man. Cheerio. Bye-bye.